All of us come from a wide array, a broad spectrum of personal spiritual beliefs. Collectively, we will call that religion. That may or may not mean the adherence or practice of a standardized, institutionalized practice of faith, such as Islam or Catholicism or Judaism or Jainism or Mormonism. It may or may not be that, or it might be bits and pieces of a few of them, or it may be the total absence of all of them. We cover the full spectrum as, as a collective. The Catholic Church has a term called syncretism, which basically means an assemblage of chosen beliefs from a wide array of religions, you know, cherry picking uh, and putting them all together, you know, according to what vibes positively and rings as true with you. Uh, they do not smile upon that, though. <laughs> um, but, you know, when it comes to doctrine and dogma and theology, there is no end. There is no resolution. There is no conclusion. Because we are subjective. We can only understand things from our own personal experience, limitations, bias, biases, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, where you stand depends on where you sit. Um, so in regards to theology and dogma and doctrine and all that, just choose what vibes as pono and true and right and good for you until and unless it doesn't and just dismiss the rest or you would not be being authentic and stay away from the bottomless pit of you know debating theology as I've said before where there's two theologians there's three arguments you know um, and we must all understand that we're all subjective and we're all coming from our own collective uh, collection of experiences and it may it, it will not be the same for all of us it is probably not the same for any of us and it's fine <laughs> you know we're all walking each other home kind of thing um, but we must be I don't prefer the word tolerant I prefer the word accepting if possible, even welcoming. If you want to take it to the next level, celebrating. But at least accepting of the fact that we will not all come to the same conclusions for the same reasons in the same way from the same background. It's not possible. It's never going to happen. It never has. It will never. So, you know, you've heard the expression, uh, there is no God but Allah. You've heard the Bible verse, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man enters the kingdom of heaven except through me. All of these things. It is not to, it is not to discredit such claims and to say that those are false. But it is to say that everyone comes to the divine as they are. And the divine welcomes them as they are. And we have no right to condemn somebody for how they, of pure heart, intention, and motive, and discernment, are navigating their own personal way through the labyrinth of life experience and inner discernment that leads to eventual bursts of understanding, unfolding of realizations. Um, St. Thomas Aquinas said of, uh, he, was, he was speaking of people who believe and people who don't. In other words, believers and atheists, okay? And he said, uh, to one with faith, no explanation is necessary. And to one without faith, no explanation is possible. So some of us may be at a point of atheism. Um, Athe <laughs> this is a little funny, but uh, atheism 
is the middle step between uh, Christians who become Western Buddhists. <laughs> it's that middle step between the two. But, um, you know, the point is that everybody is, is finding their own way the best they can, and it will not match along the same lines as everybody else, and we need to be respectful to everyone, and everyone should be respectful to us as long as the heart is pure and the intention is noble, and the discernment is clear, I will add, because we can be misled and we have to be careful about that. Um, Mahatma Gandhi said, the essence of all religions is one, only their approaches are different. Molana Jalal ad-Din Muhammad Rumi, aka Rumi. <laughs> I love this quote. The lamps are different, but the light is the same. One matter, one energy, one light, one light mind, endlessly emanating all things. In other words, different lamps, same flame. Lamps being belief systems, religions, ways of understanding the divine. But the divine is the same one dancing flame atop all of the differing lamps. Uh, he also said, I belong to no religion. My religion is love. Every heart is my temple. Whatever faith you may practice, incorporate that into it. He also said, I went to the temple, and I didn't find him there. Then I went to the church, and I didn't find him there. Then I went to the mosque, and I didn't find him there. Finally, I looked into my own heart, and there I found him. He was there all along. We are the very temple of God. We are the emanation of the divinity from which we have arisen and which we are expressing. And if we align our sovereign free will with, we serve by allowing the divine to serve humanity and all life through us. That's how we serve. Paramansa Yogananda said, Saints of all religions have attained God-realization through the simple concept of the Cosmic Beloved. Because the Absolute is without qualities and is inconceivable. Human thought and yearning have ever personalized it as the Universal Mother. Mother God. Father God. God as you can best understand, which is never complete. God. Of course, if we say Father God and Mother God, both are correct and both are incorrect and both are incomplete we cannot contain or define God to do so is folly and that's why that's why Rabia al-Basri said since no one really knows anything about God those who think they do are just troublemakers Epictetus the philosopher said all religions must be tolerated or accepted for every man must get to heaven in his own way. And Mother Teresa said, No color, no religion, no nationality should come between us. We are all children of God. Ramana Maharshi said, Call it by any name, God, self, the heart, or the seat of consciousness. It is all the same. And perhaps I'll finish with this quote by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, verse 411. By whatsoever way men seek me, I accept them the same way. Thus, there is one God who appears to us in the form in which we seek him. Meaning, God welcomes us as we are from where we approach him. and will present himself in a form that is comfortable and most welcoming to us because all of the forms are not completely God but God can take on any form 
and welcome us into his embrace in the way in which we are most able to completely receive it.